Good afternoon, I'm Jeff Slauson. And I'm Kayla Spector. And welcome to our first Democracy in Action live update, coming to you from the NCC News Studio. Democracy in Action is a collaborative project of journalism students here at the SI Newhouse School of Public Communications. We have more than 100 students visiting polling places across Onondaga County. And the students are broadcast majors like us, but also newspaper, online, magazine, and photo majors, plus students from our military program. Now let's take a look at an election tradition. Supporters of all parties come together to eat an election day meal at the 67th annual election day spaghetti dinner. NCC News reporter Isabel Sanchez is live now at Our Lady of Pompeii Church. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, we're talking here about 700 pounds of pasta to feed the whole county and more than 6,000 meatballs. This is a tradition that has been going on for 67 years and everybody here, let me tell you, they're so excited about the fact that regardless of that is election day, there's always one thing in common. It is sitting together on a table to share a plate of pasta. This will be going on whole day. It started at 1130 today and it will be continued to go on until 7 p.m. It's $9 for adults. It's $7 for kids from 5 to 10 years old and it's for free for kids younger than five years old. This is really a way to get together everybody regardless of the party they are from. I'm telling you like just five minutes ago we saw Mayor Miner going in and right now um, Joni Mahoney is right outside talking to some people ready to go inside. Here everybody is just sharing a table regardless of the party they come from. It's just about getting together as a community. An important tradition that here the Lady of Pompeii has been going on for 67 years. Again they're expecting a lot a lot of people for today and they also have available delivery and takeoff. Reporting live from the Lady of Pompeii for Democracy in Action, I am Isabel Sanchez. Back to you guys. Thanks Isabel. It really sounds like a great event. So now let's take a look at those who are on the ballot here in Onondaga County. Running first for the Syracuse Common Councilor at large seat vacated by Pam Hunter, current councilor and Democrat Joe Nicoletti, a familiar face here in central New York politics, is being challenged by Republican Norm Snyder. And for Congress, Republican incumbent John Katko is running against Democrat Colleen Deacon. Early in the campaign, the polls showed a close race. But now as Election Day approaches, recent polls say Katko has widened his lead. Our Democracy in Action reporters have fanned out across Onondaga County today. Dante Harris is out at the Community Center in Solvay, and he's back in studio now to tell us what is unique about that location. That's right. I got a chance to talk to some of the earliest voters this morning. I spoke to a woman who's been voting at this location for more than 50 years. So how long have you been voting here? 55 years. And what keeps you coming back to vote here? Well, I'm part of the village. I love the village. Salve Geddes Youth Center provides youth programs to kids in the community. The gym is closed, but the pool is open. The children's program that we provide, the after school program, is free of charge. And uh, if you have kids in the community that want to exercise and be healthy and hang out with their friends, it's a great place to be. I'm here at Salve Getif's Youth Center, where when you're finished voting, you could come here and you can grab a snack. The ladies behind me have been here doing this bake sale ever since voting here has begun. When they're done with the bake sale, the money that they earn, they donated to all the youth programs around this area. A group of us made 30 pies here, apple pies at the youth center, and they're all gone. There was a pretty good turnout this morning at the community center, but the, but they wait, they want, was not, was not long. Reporting live, I'm Dante Harris, back to you. Thanks, Dante. And for the U.S. Senate, Democratic incumbent Chuck Schumer is facing off against Republican Wendy Long, who lost to Senator Kirsten Gillibrand in 2012. This should be a fairly safe election for Schumer, as he won by over 30% in 2010. And new this year here in Onondaga County, there is a way for you to keep track of the voting tally here at your local precinct. The Board of Elections is launching a results caster starting later today. You can log on to the website ongov.resultscaster.com and get your local results. You'll see which candidate is leading in your precinct. Again, that website is ongov.resultscaster.com. And let's 
And now let's take a look at the presidential swing states. The states we're following are Florida, Virginia, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, Nevada, and Arizona. You can tune in to NCC News throughout the day to see how Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton are doing in these states. And we now have with us political scientist Christopher Ferrissey of Syracuse University with our political reporter Blake Levine. Hey Mr. Ferrissey. How you doing? Good Blake, nice to be here. So I'm curious, because the Senate races are very close. So we have Kelly Ayotte versus Maggie Hassan and Kelly Ayotte's up average about 1.5. Pat Toomey's down to Katie McGinney about 2. Marco Rubio's up about 3.7 over Pat Murphy. Richard Burr about up two and a half over Deborah Ross and Rob Portman's up an average of 18 when they were tied in June over Ted Strickland. Ryan's Priebus of, of the GOP says that they're going to have 52 plus still in the Senate. What, what do you think the, uh, the results finally end up? Uh, well, a lot of objective forecasters have put the control of the Senate at 50-50 or 51-49. So it's going to come down to uh, a few seats today that people should pay attention to. North Carolina. Uh, and what's good to pay attention to tonight is the turnout for the top of the ticket because people turn out to vote for the presidential candidate and stay to vote for the Senate seat. Um, so if, for example, Clinton wins North Carolina, uh, that might put the Senate seat in Democratic hands. If she loses North Carolina, um, it could stay in the Republican column. Do you, do you believe the governor race is also a factor in North Carolina, depending on who wins that state? It could be. People are trying to get out the vote for uh, the state level two, and uh, McCoy might be in trouble there. So there's a few paths that Donald Trump has to win, and one of those being that he's got to win Utah, Arizona, Colorado, Ohio, Florida, Georgia, Iowa, North Carolina, New Hampshire. but. The, the real question is going to be, can he pull off Michigan or Pennsylvania? Do you see that happening? Uh, I see that as very unlikely. Uh, Michigan has voted uh, for the Democratic side since 1988. Uh, Pennsylvania, too, has been reliably uh, in the Democratic column. So I think that you see some of Trump's travels in the past couple of days, and these were a political Hail Mary, that not only uh, is his path to 70 winning every swing state, but he has to turn a blue state red. Yeah, I was, I was very curious why he was in Minnesota and Virginia, and we were talking off, off the set about that. But where do you think the electoral vote finally ends? So do you think it, she's going to win by above 300? Is Donald Trump going to win? Where do you think the electoral vote finally ends? So I think that the polls are going to actually underestimate Clinton's support for two reasons. One is that it's clear that Clinton has developed a better ground game to get out the vote than Trump has. And also the early votes indicate a huge upswell in Latino support in states like Nevada and Florida and even Georgia that might give, um, as a forerunner, a large Latino uh, vote across the nation. So you, do you believe that we find out tonight that Clinton has won, or do you think this is something we find out in the morning? And do you think Donald Trump, if he loses, calls for a recount? So I think this will end relatively early. Uh, states to watch out for would be New Hampshire, North Carolina, Florida, Ohio. If all those turn blue, it'll be a pretty quick night. But if those are red, then uh, I think it'll go on until the evening. But some way or another, it'll be decided tonight. And I think the nation will turn in to see what Donald Trump will do tonight. It's not clear. Already this morning he's given indication about uh, not conceding uh, if the results don't go his way tonight as he has in the past. So stay tuned. Okay. Right. Thank you so much, Mr. Ferrissey. Thanks. Now that's, that's all we have. Continuing coverage. Oh, sorry. Uh, back to Kayla and Jeff. Thank you both for that. Uh, that's all we have for right now. We'll have continuing coverage throughout the day, so tune back in at 2 p.m for the newest updates on Election Day throughout Central New York. And in the meantime, follow along on Twitter with the hashtag NHDIA for up-to-the-minute coverage as Election Day continues.